This Georgia Department of Education screencast is intended to provide teachers of fifth grade social studies with content knowledge to aid in teaching the Georgia Standards of Excellence. This screencast covers Georgia Standard of Excellence SS5G1. Locate important places in the United States. A. Locate important man-made places. Include the Chisholm Trail, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, Montgomery, Alabama, and Chicago, Illinois. This screencast will cover parts of other standards associated with these places, including SS5G2. The Chisholm Trail was a more than 1,000-mile-long cattle trail that originated in San Antonio, Texas, and ended at the rail station in Abilene, Kansas. The trail took months to travel, crossed two major rivers, canyons, prairies, and low mountain ranges. Cattle rustlers, weather, and the rough terrain made the trail a dangerous journey. The Chisholm Trail was named after Jesse Chisholm, a fur trader who had built several trading posts along the route that the trail would later take. The trail was a series of routes that ranchers in Texas used to drive cattle over land to the railhead in Abilene, Kansas. For students to understand why ranchers would want to take on such a long and arduous journey, we must familiarize them with the concept of supply and demand, and how the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution, the development of the railroads, and westward expansion all came together to create the unique set of circumstances under which the great western cattle trails, like the Chisholm Trail, came to be. At the end of the Civil War, many industries began expanding as a result of inventions in new manufacturing and processing techniques. In 1865, Philip Danforth Armour opened Armour & Company in Chicago as part of the meat packaging industry expansion. This created great demand for beef in the north. Unfortunately, Texas was where much of the cattle in this country was being raised. The Texas cattlemen quickly discovered that they could get $40 per cow instead of $4 per cow if they could just get them to the railhead or train depot in Missouri, where they could be shipped by train to Chicago and points east, where supply was low and demand was much higher for the beef. A price incentive is when people do something to get a better price, whether it is for buying something or selling something. In this case, the cattlemen got a better price for their beef by driving them north rather than selling locally and driving them to New Orleans. And so the ranchers hired cowboys every summer to make the more than 200-mile-long trek north. The cattle trails were relatively short-lived, however, as the railroads expanded southward and people settled and fenced the lands that the cattle trails crossed, making the trek impossible just twenty or so years later. Pittsburgh lies at the foothills of the Allegheny Mountains, where the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers join to form the Ohio River in the western part of the state. Pittsburgh rightfully earned the nickname Steel City when Andrew Carnegie began producing steel with a process known as the Bessemer process. This process allowed steel to be produced cheaply and efficiently, conveniently at a time when demand for steel by the growing railroad industry grew astronomically. This in turn created a demand for low-paid workers to man the steel mills. Newly arrived immigrants from Central and Southern Europe provided this cheap source of labor. Unfortunately, this pauper labor, as it was called, created a great deal of resentment and anti-immigration sentiment. It also drastically increased the population of Pittsburgh. During the fifty years spanning the turn of the century, Pittsburgh population increased sevenfold. The cultural effects of this massive immigration are still quite visible in Pittsburgh today. It was more than just a fortuitous alignment of demand for steel coinciding with development of a process and a large migration of cheap labor to the city that made it an industrial center. Pittsburgh was uniquely suited to the steel industry because of its resources. The Pittsburgh Coal Seam is a large deposit of high-quality coal perfect for making steel. Additionally, its location at the confluence of the Allegheny and Monongahela, where they form the Ohio River, allowed for easy delivery of coal to the mills and the transportation of the finished product out to the markets. So now you know where the Pittsburgh Steelers get their name. Kitty Hawk, North Carolina is a very small town that sits on the northern edge of the Outer Banks, a string of barrier islands and peninsulas that protrude out from and stretch along most of the coast of North Carolina. Kitty Hawk's total area is less than eight and a quarter miles, and its biggest claim to fame is that it is listed as the site of the Wright Brothers' first controlled powered airplane flight. It is a bit ironic that Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, a much larger town about four miles south of Kitty Hawk, is the actual site of the flight. But as Kill Devil Hills did not exist at the time, Kitty Hawk gets the credit. 
The Wright brothers actually hail from Dayton, Ohio, but they needed the unique weather conditions and geography of the area near Kitty Hawk for their experiments in flight. Initially, they simply checked the weather statistics, looking for a place with near constant light winds to help provide lift for their plane. Upon discovering that Kitty Hawk met that condition, they wrote that to the commissioner of the town at the time, who assured them that it also met their requirements of a tall hill, no trees or bushes to get in the way, and a nice soft landing of sand. And so humble Kitty Hawk entered the history books. Another frequent misconception about the flights that took place at Kitty Hawk is that they were the first time people flew. This is by no means true. People had been gliding for decades before the Wright brothers. The significant difference is that the Wright brothers took their first controlled powered flight, a true airplane, rather than a glider. This may not seem like much of a difference, but power which allows for sustained flight, and steering which allows for control of the plane, turn it from a dangerous novelty to a practical means of transportation. Our next location on our tour is Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor is located in the Hawaiian island chain, in the middle of the vast Pacific Ocean. Many people don't realize just how far the Hawaiian islands are from the mainland. They are nearly as close to Japan as they are to the United States. Pearl Harbor is in the city of Honolulu, on the southern edge of the island of Oahu. Pearl Harbor is what is known as a landlocked harbor, which is one of the many reasons the U.S. Navy chose it as a military base and home to the Pacific Naval Fleet. As you can see in this satellite image, Pearl Harbor does not open directly onto the Pacific Ocean. One must travel up a short river to get to it, making it especially easy to defend. Well, at least it was until the invention of the airplane. Pearl Harbor will forever live in infamy because it was the site of a devastating surprise attack by the Japanese Imperial Navy that decimated the U.S. naval fleet and brought our country into World War II. The attack on the morning of December 7, 1941, consisted of two waves of airplanes that launched from Japanese aircraft carriers. Caught completely unaware and defenseless against such an attack from the air, all eight battleships moored in the harbor were damaged and four of them sank. The attack had been intended to prevent the U.S. from being able to attack Japan, but instead it sparked our national outrage and united us in our decision to enter the war. The USS Arizona was the only ship not eventually raised from the bottom of the harbor. Having suffered four direct hits causing its munitions to explode, the Arizona burned and quickly sank, killing everyone on board. The Arizona remains on the floor of Pearl Harbor with most of her crew still on board. It is designated as a national graveyard and a memorial. Built by the National Park Service spans her midsection. The memorial can only be reached by ferry and only after viewing a film about her and being made aware of her history and status as a graveyard for fallen soldiers. On the relatively flat fertile land of the Gulf Coastal Plain along a bend in the Alabama River sits our next stop. The capital of Alabama, Montgomery, is in the central southern part of the state. In the heart of the slave-owning South, Montgomery was host to the Southern Convention, where six of the first seven states to secede from the Union discussed the formation of the Confederate States of America. It is not surprising that Montgomery would go on to be at the heart of the American Civil Rights Movement. Students will no doubt be somewhat familiar with the story of Rosa Parks, who refused to give up her seat to a white man on a Montgomery bus, despite the law requiring her to do so. But many may not be able to appreciate her sacrifice, and that of the many others who participated in the Montgomery bus boycotts. The boycotts lasted from December 5, 1955, until December 20, 1956. For 381 days, spanning an entire year, through all seasons, people refused to ride the bus in protest. In rain, thunderstorms, icy cold winds, swelteringly hot days, despite being tired from a long day of work, they refused to get on those buses. The boycott was extremely effective, nearly bankrupting the transit system. As Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. and other civil rights movement leaders led peaceful marches and protests and were arrested for their efforts, and as the officials of the city responded more and more forcefully and aggressively, the tide finally shifted, and the Supreme Court ruled to desegregate the buses in Montgomery, Alabama. 
Chicago is located on the southwestern shore of Lake Michigan in the state of Illinois and straddles the St. Lawrence Seaway Continental Divide. This is not the same as the Great Continental Divide that students learned about in the fourth grade. This divide crosses above the Eastern Continental Divide and separates the waters that flow northward into the Great Lakes Basin and those that flow southward into the Mississippi River Basin. Chicago got its humble beginnings because of its location. It is situated between the shores of Lake Michigan and a small stretch of water called the Chicago Portage that connects the waters of the Great Lakes to the waters of the Mississippi River Basin. This allowed ships and goods to travel between the central region of our country and the Atlantic Ocean and ensured Chicago would become a center of industry and trade. In 1871 a careless cow owned by Mrs. O'Leary nearly destroyed the city. As all of the buildings were made of wood, the fire that started when the cow kicked over a lantern spread, well, like wildfire, and burned for two days. This became known as the Great Chicago Fire and became immortalized in a children's song. What is significant about this, in terms of our standards, is that the rebuilding of the city at a time when industry was on the rise and steel had become relatively cheap and easy to acquire, thanks to Andrew Carnegie, meant that Chicago got a serious facelift. Instead of using traditional wood, the section of city that burned was rebuilt using steel and concrete construction, setting the model for the future and making it relatively fire resistant. It was this industrialization in combination with it being a transportation hub that brought huge numbers of immigrants during the turn of the century to take advantage of the many job opportunities industry brought. It is currently the third most populous city in the United States. That concludes our virtual tour of the man-made places and a bit of the history that goes along with them that your students will need to learn for this year's social studies standards. Here now are some helpful resources where you can find additional information. Also, you will find the resources used in the making of this video.